Good morning and welcome back to the reading of God's Word. This week we pick up in the end of 1 Samuel and we move on into 2 Samuel. But in these last eight chapters of 1 Samuel, we come to the end of the kingdom of Saul. And in the first part of, or as we go through 2 Samuel, this is the kingdom of David. So to set this up, uh, we've come out of the period of Judges, and I'm not going to go back too deep, but we go back to the period of Judges, and of course they've had all they want, they want a king. Back in 1 Samuel, as Brother Tim has brought you up to this point, the key verse there really was in chapter 8, verse 7, where they said they have, where, uh, where the Lord has told Samuel, they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. So that was a very key and pivotal verse there and as, they, as they move into this kingdom. But God has been planning this all along. We remember reading back in the book of Ruth. And Ruth, of course, is the great-great-grandmother of King David. So God is planning David's kingdom. So we see that much. Also in here in the first part of the first book of Samuel is Samuel himself. And so God has anointed and he's bringing in the prophet Samuel who will both anoint Saul and David. So we've got that in place and all that has happened and without going any farther back and, and redoing all of that. So we'll, we'll go from there. So now David and Saul both know that Saul is losing his kingdom because he had presented the sacrifice and, and, and Samuel has already told him he was going to lose his kingdom. So, and they know that David is going to take his place. Well, Saul is not going to go down without a fight. So what we find here now, we, we pick up in chapter 24. In chapter 24, Saul is out with some 3,000 men, and they're trying to kill David. They want to kill him. And, they, and so you read through this chapter. It's a very plain, straightforward story. Uh, Saul is out trying to kill David. Uh, Saul goes into a cave, just happens to be the same cave that David and his men are hiding in. And then uh, as Saul removes his coat or his, his robe, David cuts off a piece of that. And when Saul goes out, David comes out after him and presents it to him. And, and he tries to explain to King Saul that, you know, I am not trying to hurt you. I do not want to kill you. And so uh, that is... Part of that story here that, that Saul then realizes it for this time in chapter 24. And, and the reason we say that they both know what's going to happen, if you look in chapter 24, verse 20, it says, uh, Saul, after he has been confronted with David, he says, Behold, now I know that you shall surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. So this is not new to them. They, they both know this is what is going to happen. So David goes his way, Saul goes his way, and there for a little while, it, uh, David, uh, Saul gives up trying to kill David until we get to chapter 26, and we'll get through that in just a minute. So we go to 25, chapter 25, as we look at this. Right away, verse 1, chapter 25, Samuel dies. Okay, But that's not the last time we're going to see Samuel. We're going to see him as a spirit here in a little while, but that's, and, and we get to um, uh, just a little, little far down, farther down the road here. So Samuel dies, and we get the story of Nabal and Abigail and David. David, of course, has been, he's running all around the southern part of the kingdom of Judea and, and in, the, in the tribe of Judea area and over close to the Philistines. So he's, he's out there dodging Saul where he can with all of his 400 people. So he comes up to uh, Nabal. Nabal is a very rich man. He's got a lot of, lot of uh, herd, and they're shearing the sheep at this time. So David sends to uh, ask Nabal for supplies, and Nabal refuses him because Nabal's excuse is that David is up against the king. In other words, he is, he is rebellious against the king. So, so Nabal won't give it to him. So David decides he gets, he gets frustrated with that. He says, okay, well, I'll take it. And so he, he girds up his men and they take off. Well, this word gets back to Abigail. Abigail's got a lot more sense than Nabal because Nabal's name means fool. So she gets a great big gift together of food and wine and, and, and provisions and meets David on the road. As you read through this, David 
is he's frustrated. He's going to, he's going to go and do something that he's going to get revenge. Okay. This is one of those things that God does not uh, see very lightly. He doesn't like that. So that you can see this in Abigail, God moving through Abigail to prevent David from doing something that he should not be doing. And so she meets him on the walk, on the road. She talks with him and it comes finally down to the point where the, 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 the key verses in here after this is over with, and she, she has talked him out of it, go to um, chapter 25 and verse 30 and following. And it says, it shall come about when the Lord shall do for my Lord according to all the good things that has spoken concerning you and shall appoint you ruler over Israel that this will not cause grief or a troubled heart to my Lord, both by having shed blood without a cause and by my Lord having avenged himself. Down here, David in turn, 32 says, then David said to Abigail, blessed be the Lord God of Israel who sent you this day to me and blessed be your discernment and blessed be you who have kept me this day from bloodshed and from avenging myself on, of my own, by my own hand. So you see God stopping David from doing something to it by himself. So, so God's, God's actually protecting him here in this. Now, Abigail will eventually, Nabal will die. Abigail will become David's wife. And that, you'll see that uh, story as it plays out a little later on. So then we come to chapter 26. Well, back up in 24, Saul has had 3,000 men out trying to kill David. Now he's got another 3,000 out trying to kill David. Only this time is a little bit different situation. And David, you, as you read through this story, um, he, um, David sneaks into the, to the camp, Saul's camp at night. He steals a spear and a jug of water, takes it out. And once again, he in turn, uh, tries to explain to Saul, I'm not out to kill you. I'm not going to try and do this. David, uh, convinces him of that. And then Saul in turn in, in chapter 26 and verse 21 says, then Saul said, I have sinned, return my son David, for I will not harm you again because my life was precious in your sight this day. Behold, I have played the fool and have committed a serious error. Well, this being understood, David is still not convinced that Saul will not try to kill him. So this takes us into chapter 27. Chapter 27 David finds refuge over in the Philistine area. So he goes into the Philistine territory and he meets, um, he meets uh, King Achish, okay, over there. And he befriends King Achish and Achish gives him then a city to live in. That would be Ziklag. So David and his men have this place in the Philistine area. Ziklag is actually in the Judah area. But um, but Philistines have it for a while, and so they're going to live there for about a year and four months. And from there, David is making certain raids out against uh, some of his enemies, and just for just for taking uh, supplies and stuff. So David's busy doing that. Now this chapter 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, all this ties together. And what we see here now is the beginning of the end of Saul. So. David is over in the Philistine area. Now the Philistines are in turn in chapter 28 and verse 1 are out preparing to go to war with Israel. Now David is in turn at this point trying to uh, prove himself to Achish that he is going to go with them to fight with them and prove himself. But eventually over in chapter 29, then the commanders of the uh, armies of the Philistines, they, they tell Akish, no, you send him back home. We don't want him going with us because he li he's liable to turn on us while we're there and he will fight with his brethren of, of the Israelites against us. So that, moving from 27 to 29, now we back up to 28. This is kind of very interesting part right here. This, this, is, a, this is an interesting read where we see... Um, as the Philistines now are preparing for war, Samuel, we know, is already dead. Saul, in turn, in this, in verse 6, Saul require, inquires of the Lord, should I go up against the Philistines? Will you give them into my hand? There is no answer. God has already turned against him. 
And so um, he, he goes then to try to find the medium, a medium. And so the medium, of course, Saul has already got the, the, the mediums out of the area. So this, this he, he turns, he tells his people, seek for me a woman who is a medium. So anyway, he gets this medium and she, he goes, or he, he disguises himself. He goes to her and gets, gets her then to call up Samuel. Now, Saul cannot see Samuel, but she can. And so Samuel comes up and this interesting, very interesting uh, discussion goes on where he says, then Samuel, he, he goes to the point and says, you know, who is he? What is his form? Samuel does not understand, can't see this. Okay, go, to, go back to that. And so we go to verse 14 here in chapter 28. He says, she says, I see an old man coming up and he is wrapped with a road. And Saul knew that it was Samuel. And he bowed with his face to the ground and did homage. Then Samuel said to Saul, why have you disturbed me from bringing me up? Well, Saul in turn says, well, I beseech the Lord. I've asked, inquired of the Lord, but he has not answered me. He says, why then do you ask me since the Lord has departed from you and has become your adversary? And then he goes on to say, the Lord has, has done according to as he has spoke for me. For the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and had given it to your neighbor, to David. And in verse 19, moreover, the Lord will also give over Israel along with you into the hands of the Philistines. Therefore, tomorrow you and the sons, you and your sons will be with me. Indeed, the Lord will give over the army of the Israel into the hands of the Philistines. So Saul now learns his fate. He knows this. And not only by the, and he's saying tomorrow, I mean, this is right away. So Saul is getting ready to ready to die. And then it brings us in out of this chapter 28 discussion. Of course, go back to 29 then, and you see where David is now being refused to go to war with the, with the Philistines. So he goes back to Ziglag. Now he gets into chapter 30. So chapter 30 is he goes back to, to Ziglag, him and his men, and they find it has been raided and burned. David's men are for furious, and they're ready to kill David about this thing. So David gets control of it, and they go and they, are raid, they raid the Amalekites who have raided Ziklag. Now, think back for a moment. Saul was supposed to have killed all these Amalekites, but he did not. And so David goes back, and he, he captures, he recaptures all of the soul, all of the spoil from the Amalekites. And he in turn then, this is a very interesting point right here. He in turn takes the spoil from the Amalekites and he starts distributing it into the cities of Judah, in the Judah area. A lot of cities, the name of a bunch of different cities that he sends some of the spoil to. And you can see right here, David is basically greasing the skids of his own kingdom coming up. So we get to this point here where David is, is getting ready to move back into Israel. Okay, so he's, he's not in favor with, with the Palestinians anymore. So then, or the Philistines, really. And the, um, so here now we come into chapter 31. In chapter 31, we find that Israel is defeated by the Philistines. And Saul is killed and his three sons, including Jonathan, and that that Saul's head is chopped off. He is pinned to a wall. The, his head and his armor is passed around in the Philistine area uh, for, their for them to rejoice over all of that. So with that, we come to the very end then of 1 Samuel, and we come to the end of Saul, and we begin the kingdom then of David. So this has been a very busy, busy time, and I pray God that, I pray that, uh, that you will pray that God will give you discernment and understanding as you read through this. And I pray that God will bless the reading of his word.